Hey guys, so today you and I are going to talk about AI. So let's get into it. So the question in question was, hi Frederick, how to use AI to become a better software engineer? Thanks for your time and efforts. I think it's worth mentioning here that the person also wrote, uh, this was an email, uh, the person also wrote how to use AI to get ahead of other developers in the subject. I think that's important to highlight as well, because it sort of, <laughs> it, it touches on uh, on on a few a few things that, like, uh, yeah, your value system, dude, you and I are so different. <laughs> Anywho, uh, so... This is probably the, the chat GPT I'm assuming is the one that you're talking about. Uh, it's taken the world by storm and the news and like uh, YouTube and I guess a swarm with people who are going to try to like uh, I wonder do you, does anybody see the cor the the uh, YouTube's uh, get rich by chat GPT uh, trend sort of feeling very oddly like the Bitcoin trend just wondering. Uh, it's just me, maybe. Anywho, uh, so the thing that I usually, uh, it's the number one question, like even before, like it was the same day, this is like just question number two or three, I think, on the same day for the same, uh, with the same route, uh, how do I use AI efficiently, or is AI going to take over, etc, etc. I made a few videos, I have made videos about this a few times now, and basically what I keep on telling people is that fundamentally, the uh, the thing that ChatGPT and similar AI systems are very good at doing is a very different sort of problem from what you as a software developer is going to face. What I usually tell people is that if you have a problem that is fairly standard, such as you have a syntax problem in your code, you want to learn how to use React, you want to f to cheat on a lead code question where like you need to do, I don't know, an implementation of a merge sort or in some language or if you want to do something that is very, very likely made, found on the internet and has been done a billion, billion, a million, a hundred billion times, and the questions has been asked a hundred million times, then it's very likely that the AI is going to work for you. Try to ask ChatGPT, or try to, like, just do me a favor, try to describe your infrastructure for ChatGPT, like, basically your deployment, and ask, how can I reduce, uh, I don't know, my overall deployment time by a certain amount of time or try to ask it something that has to do with the logical flaw in your system such as I don't know when I make this network call I get a 500 error or I don't know why this specific function seems to break in my application here is the stack trace let's see if it can figure that out because this is a problem that is specific to your, your code and I have used ChatGPT enough to tell you exactly what I'm telling you guys. It's the sort of thing where I made a video a while back when the uh, when some Google engineer said that their system was sentient, and apparently they are losing to well, that's what the media claims they are losing to ChatGPT. So if ChatGPT is sentient, I would be very impressed, because basically what I'm saying is that when you know how to pose your question to an AI in the correct way, it's not going to be able to answer it because when you understand at least the basic of what an AI is able, capable to do today, you will understand that there are some problems they're going to be able to do really well, and some problems they're going to choke on completely every single time. It's the same. It's the same. It's the basic same trick you use for figuring out if that very handsome man or beautiful girl who is showing you an interest on your dating account is the real person. You simply ask them, "Can you please hold up a fork and send me a picture of that?" Or touch a lamp with your index finger because if you want to check if someone's faking you have to you may give them something that is not foreseeable you add a bit of human randomness into the mix and I suggest you do the same thing with your AI system and see how far it's gonna get in, in replacing you or you in your job so the same thing is true for most professions there are 
definitely professions where this is very useful. And my favorite example of this is support. Anything that has to do with that you have to basically just know how to describe something. There was a very nice, uh, uh, there was some uh, real estater who realized that he could use AI to write the specification for houses faster. It's absolutely true. That's a very good example because there's hundreds and hundreds of millions of examples of people doing that. And it's not information that's going to change all that much. It's like the specifics will change, but the overall format of the solution to that problem is the same. That is not true for most software to problems, with one exception. And that is when you want to learn how to be a better software developer. So the question here is, in my opinion, a little bit, uh, it, it's relevant, uh, even though I don't seem to, I, I'm not a big fan of the, the <laughs> of the of the heart and soul of it but basically you can use AI to learn how to code better if you're just trying to become a better software developer it's very unlikely that you're going to be able to use it in some way because even today like they have examples of AI's winning programming contests and the people who don't read the whole article doesn't don't realize that the reason why it wins is because the person who is doing the coding is a professor in uh, computer science and they're telling the AI how to write the program. They're not writing the code for the AI. The AI is writing the code, but the AI has to get all the specifications and you have to, t it's basically, you're basically telling it, you're, you're acting as the AI's unit test. You are telling it, this is right, this is wrong. This is what I need. You're putting specifications and adding information to the AI. It's not gonna be able to derive it from somewhere else, which is incidentally what I've said in quite a few videos by now, guys, where no no human can go to one of these systems without a technical understanding and just say, hey, build me this feature and set it up in our infrastructure, like in our application ecosystem that I work in. They're not able to do that and they're not going to be able to do that for a very, very long time. Because as I said, there's a big difference in training an AI on, as I said, a fairly a big data set of standard problems and having it do very, very cool, very amazing things with that and having them figure out a case by case situation. The differences between that is enormous. So I suggest that if you want to leverage AI, try to understand that it's probably better for you to use it as a learning buddy. That's the way that I highly, that's the concrete way which you can use it for. You can use it to, uh, to, uh, to basically rubber duck in a, think of it as a more efficient, well, depending on how you do it, of course, a different way, an alternative to Stack Overflow, an alternative to taking guides and things like that to see if the AI can help you figure out what's wrong with your code or if it can give you suggestions on how to progress and things like that. I think that that is a very strong use case for using systems like this. But I mean, if you want to get ahead with AI over other developers, then like the the only way an AI with today's standards is going to be able to help you do that is, is as I said, if you're working in a class with other students or if you, uh, well, basically master how to do AI programming yourself, because the, the ChatGPT today is not going to make some developer better than another developer, because as I said, uh, the problems that we are dealing with are at the level where ChatGPT won't be able to solve them. And the thing that it can, that you can get though, is if you have knowledge of AI, if you know how to program with AI systems and so forth, that opens up a certain, uh, Opportun certain opportunities to you, not necessarily work related, but in the way that you write your applications. And if I go really far into the future, I suspect that at some point, uh, AI understanding, not programming and not creating the underlying models, uh, but actually understanding how to consume them, will get to a same similar level as we have today with cryptography, where most software developers have to know basic cryptography and like what is hashing, what is you see, like what is uh, asymmetric keys, symmetric keys, and things like that. So you know how to use, set up SSL or TS or TLS depending on what you're using and so forth. And you know how to hash passwords and credentials and stuff like that. Uh, you don't necessarily need to know the underlying mathematics, but you need to know how to use the libraries. And I suspect that AI will reach the same sort of point because a lot of the models that we have today may be a little bit too early to integrate into like off the shelf solutions that you can just use in your own applications, but we're getting there. 
I'm seeing it, and I'm th I absolutely love it. I think that the next set of pro like the next generation of program programs we're going to create in this the next generation of systems is going to be absolutely mind blowing in comparison to what we have today. So what I want you to take away from this is that if you want to use AI to become a better software developer, I suggest that you uh, that you think of it as a learning buddy because it's very unlikely that it's going to be able to do work for you because unfortunately for you, you don't deal with standard problems. If you work in support, or if you work at writing articles, or you write uh, children's stories, or you write uh, like um, specif spe specifications for you know, different uh, uh, the real estate or stuff like something like that, or if you're an influencer, by the by, if you want to just have a really active Twitter profile and stuff like that, news, anything like that, ChatGPT and AI are going to help you because there's so much data on that and most of the stuff that you see is just derivatives of other things. You don't deal with necessarily with very specific and unique problems to a given environment. That's what a software developer does. And so the best solution or the best suggestion I can give you is to use it as a learning tool because most of the time you might get stuck or if you're trying to figure out how to use a specific coding language or so forth it's going to be able to help you out. It's very unlikely that just you learning how to use ChatGPT is going to give you a leg up of over other software developers. You're much better off in that situation to just continue and stay the normal course that I've suggested to you to tinker with projects continuously learning and trying to increase the range like the range of things that you understand until you understand the whole delivery uh, process of the uh, of software development and for those of you who want to like sort of peer into the future i suggest that you take a look at basic ai programming how it works and like how you train these sort of um, models uh, because it's very likely i suggest i suspect at the very least apart from it being extremely cool and extremely interesting and like the biggest thing that I think is going to happen in the future, at least in computer, the computer world for now, until we can literally manifest things within from the digital world in the physical world with like VR and so forth, which is also pretty cool. But AI, I'm a little bit more AI oriented. Uh, it's very likely that some basic knowledge of how this works and how to consume these libraries is going to become more and more relevant for everyday software developers. Have a great day.